All right, Colorado, we are back. And it's time for us to take your Colorado Avalanche into year number five. We're going to get a good chunk of the year five simulation done in this video. I got a lot set up for us. But before we take one step further into the NHL, we got to focus on the AHL. I completely overlooked the fact that the San Antonio Rampage, our AHL affiliate, won the Calder Championship last year. So last, last season, we had the best team in the AHL. AHL, which is fantastic. I mean, we have players down there, both forwards, defenders, and goaltenders, that we want to see produce. We want to see succeed. So we're going to start this video off by showing you the San Antonio Rampage. Sucks that I couldn't show you guys the team last year. Completely just... I completely forgot about it. I was so distraught that we just lost to the St. Louis Blues for the second time in three years. But here they are. So we got Ivan Voloshenko. We drafted this guy 81st overall in 2017. He's still 79 overall. We'll see if this guy grows. Medium top nine. Got him alongside of Wheel and Fontaine. Second line, we got Dwayne Sugihara. Also drafted this guy in the third round in 2017. I picked up Radic Foxa and uh, Christoph Berchi, just loading up the AHL squad. Third line, you got Logan Shaw, Andrew Kopp, and Cole Lind. Drafted this guy in the second round in 2017. So there's three forwards right there. And then on the fourth line, you got Antti Vutalainen. We drafted this guy in the first round in 2018. A low top six grinder. He really hasn't... Uh, Hasn't uh, grown for us. What does individual stats look like? Holy shit, look at that stick checking category. 96 overall. Well, I mean, if this guy can... Maybe I should move him up in the lineup a little bit. You know what? Let me move him up there and Logan Shaw. You know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the fourth line, we got Maxime Jaskin. A low top nine power forward. I don't have another center down there. He's got a 71 for face off, so I'll leave him in the middle. So you can see all the forward prospects we got. And defensively, we have Vitaly Karpatsev. A two-way defender. A left-handed, medium top six. He's 80 overall, so this guy... You might see him jump up in the future. We have Gabriel Carlson, 78 overall. All medium top six. He's already 23. I don't know if this guy's going to grow too much. And then we have Andre Yemlin. Yeah, I should see where we drafted these guys. This guy went 15th overall in 2019. Medium top four. He's only 20, so I'm hoping for a good season out of him. Uh, this guy was drafted by the Columbus Blue Jackets. And when did Karpatsev go? 2017, the second round. So you can see of all of our draft picks are you know coming up in the system. We've been growing them the right way, pu putting them uh, alongside of already NHL proven talent in the AHL, and it works wonders for their simulation. And then, of course, our goaltenders. Uh, one of them didn't play last year. It was Olivier Rodrigue, but Gabriel DePenta. He had two games in the NHL, but he spent most of his time in the AHL. Started off a little bit... Uh, a little bit all over the place, but I'll take a look at his statistics. Was he the was he the goaltender for the NHL or for the um for the playoff run? Yeah, look what he did in the AHL season, twenty and twelve, and uh, the two wins in the NHL season, fantastic. And yeah, there it is. So that's a great run for our medium elite goaltender that we want to see grow. This guy in his first season in the AHL went fifteen and five in the playoffs with a goals against average of one point eight eight and a save percentage of point nine three zero. That's fantastic. So he's gonna go back. Down, uh, down to the AHL squad as our minor league starting goaltender. I um, was flirting with the idea of bringing him up as the permanent backup for our team, but you guys were saying that because his role says um, uh, minor league starting goaltender, give him all the ice time in the world down there. And it won't hurt Olivier Rodrigue because he's still listed as another goaltender. So it's not like I have two minor league starting goaltenders. Rodrigue can be the backup. Depenta can be the starting. Um, we have a stack team with uh, young forward young defensemen and everywhere else is NHL bound players okay so the AHL squad I'm hoping for another great year so is that good boys that I show them the the love that they deserve I completely forgot about it man so now that that's the AHL let's take a look at the NHL squad for year number five and before we go into this I just want to show you guys something remember how we traded away Miko Rantanen for Travis Sanheim and Travis Konechny and the second and there was another player in there our offensive category is still 97 overall in the playoffs last year offense was 97 defense was 91 so trading away Rantanen has not decreased that offensive stat but it has increased the defensive stat by two so I think that trade 
um, was the right thing to do. We're going to have to wait and see how we simulate, though. But here is the, or here are the Year 5 Colorado Avalanche. On the first line, we got Maxime Comtois alongside of Nolan Patrick and Travis Konechny. We're going to see how this guy simulates his role as a second line forward. We're going to see how he plays right there. Second line, we got Clayton Keller, Nathan McKinnon, and Jonathan Druin. Last year, it was uh, it was a JT Comfer on the second line, but I was reading your comments. You guys pointed out that Clayton Clayton Keller, his role is listed as a second line forward, and he had a great simulation year last year. He had 20 goals, 31 assists for uh, 51 points. So, I mean, look at those individual stats. His slap shot power is 94. He's got a good shot. His passing is almost in the 90s. Is he still growing? Put him alongside of, uh, uh, Nathan McKinnon, our captain, and Jonathan Druin. See how he simulates. And we can put JT Comfer back down to the third line because his role says third line scoring forward. So I'm hoping that the lack of ice time won't uh won't upset jt Comfer, and same thing with tyson jost he's uh listed as a depth forward they're going to be playing on that third line centered by adam henrique and then the fourth line the same as last year marcus felino frederick Gucci, and emil poirier on the back end we got cam fowler playing alongside of tyson berry travis sandheim playing alongside of ryan merkley and marco scandella playing alongside of Derek pooley i'll just show you guys quickly the power play lines um you know, there was a lot of issues that I had trying to figure out the right lines with this team, and we may run into morale issues because we have some spots, or we have some players, I should say, that um, are just playing third line ice time, second line ice time, and that's it. They're not getting any power play time. So just, uh, I'll just go through it all. Power play. We got Nolan Patrick, Nathan McKinnon, Jonathan Druin. They're going to be playing along our two offensive defensemen, Derek Pouliot and Ryan Merkley. I want to put these guys um, on the first line power play with all that passing and all that offensive awareness. I mean, look at Derek Pouliot's stats. So he's on the top six or the third line defensive pairing, but I got him on the first line power play. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. We got Travis Sanheim alongside of Tyson Berry on the second line power play. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Where the hell is Cam Fowler? I decided not to go with him on the power play because I got to give ice time to other players. And Cam Fowler, he's on the top two, but he still has uh, first line penalty kill time. So I'm hoping that's good enough for Cam Fowler. I want to go with uh, Derek Pouliot and uh, Ryan Merkley as the power play defenseman. The second line power play, Maxime Comtois, Adam Henrique, and Clayton Keller. So, no place do you see Travis Konechny, no place do you see JT Comfer, and no place do you see Tyson Jost. These guys are not receiving any power play time or penalty kill time. So I'm hoping that they're okay with just the ice time that they're receiving. Because, uh, like I said, Konechny, he's a second line forward. He's playing on the first line. Clayton Keller, second line. He's getting power play time, though. But JT Comfer, third line scoring forward. And Tyson Just, depth forward. I'm hoping that that ice time won't come back to bite me in the ass. Uh, penalty kill, it's just our bottom six. Adam Henrique, Emile Poirier, Frederick Gucci, Marcus Foligno. All right, and three-man penalty kill, all that good stuff. Goaltenders, we got Calvin Picard as our starting. And I picked up Scott Wedgwood, who's going to play as our backup goaltender for this year because I want to play uh, the Young Guns in the AHL. And our scratch players, we got Jason Megna, uh, Taylor Lyre or Lear, and Nick Ebert. I just picked these guys up off free agency, okay? So there it is, boys. There are all the different changes, line changes that I made to this team. Our locker room chemistry is not looking good at 60%. What are you going to do? It's all the trades that we made. But I think that this is going to be a good year for simulating, and there is no more waiting around, okay? This is year number five. Uh, I don't want to say my job is on the line, but uh, we have to start producing really good regular seasons and also start to become a legitimate contender for that Stanley Cup, not just a first or second round contender. I want to take that next step, all right? So we're going to get a good chunk of the simulating done in this video. I need some H2O. Hang on one second. Ah, much better. Okay, so we will just go we'll go to the end of the first month just to make sure that we haven't gone like 0 and 8 0 and 9 anything like that um and i have written down a few topics that i can talk about while we're simulating because i think it's going to be a fairly automatic year forward six weeks yeah but a lot of comments about free agency and my decision to not sign the young defenseman Cholowitzki and going with Marco Scandella. So I didn't even mention it in the video. I should have at least brought it up for you guys to see. I didn't want Cholowitzki because I was eyeing myself a defensive defenseman. A defensive defenseman that was a bona fide top six role. 
Cholowitzki, he may have grown to a top four, and this team already has too many top four defensemen. If I sign a guy like Cholowitzki, I might be in trouble with ice time. Scandello is just that perfect sixth defenseman, 83 overall, defensive defenseman, someone I can rely upon on the penalty kill, um, and someone who's not going to cause a fuss because of his lack of ice time, okay? We already have five defenders that I was... I mean, we don't have Cam Fowler on our first line power play. Think about that. So I just we just didn't have room for him. Where would he play? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, boom, boom, boom. So I decided to go with uh, Marco Scandella. We're going to see if that was the right decision or not. I actually want to pay attention to the first few games here. Opening night against the Nashville Predators. Back-to-back -back against the Preds, baby. We win 4-1, we lose 5-3. Yeah, it's going to be way... We're going to have to get like a good 30 games into this. Oh my god, 1-2. and two. There's no freaking way that this team is not a good simulation team. I mean, the defense, that's one thing. And we're going to talk about how we can make this team better. Maybe goaltender upgrade. We'll get to that in a second. But, you know, how many goals for per game did we score last year? 3.5? Something insane like that? There's no reason why we can't continue to do that. Rantanen was only a 20-goal scorer. It's not like we traded away a 40-goal man who, who scored so many goals for us, right? So, 4-4-0 four, four, no to start the season off the first month. I think that's about right. Let me just quickly take a look at the individual stats, uh, the team stats, I should say. Another factor might be the uh, the low locker room chemistry. If we get that up around 90, we might simulate a little bit better. So let me go to edit lines. You guys haven't seen anything at the top about morale yet, have you? No, I don't think. Let me just, the players that I'm worried about. Konechny, is he worried about ice time? No, no, individual performance. Okay, good. Clayton Keller, ice time. No, he's fine with the ice time. JT Comfer, ice time. Uh, no, he was angry that uh, Ryan Murray was released. Tyson Jost, ice, he's happy because of his ice time. Good. Okay, so, so far we haven't had any issues with the ice time. Same thing down here, Scandella. Uh, no anxiety with his new team, Derek Pouliot. No, okay, so we're good. So I think I figured out how to uh, get all these guys playing um, with the amount of ice time that they need. It's not going to work for next year because... JT Comfer, if he turns into a second line forward, even if he turns into a second line forward this year, we're in trouble. Because he's immediately going to cry out for more ice time. He's on no special teams. Uh, team stats, let me just take a look at this. We're only eight games in. I, it's not... I don't want to go crazy just yet. Goals for per game, 2.75. We were at 3.5 last year, so we could score more. Goals against per game, uh, third best in our division, which is a crazy-ass division. Okay. Power play percentage, 23%, which is fine. Winnipeg's up there at 41, my goodness. And penalty kill percentage, 83. No, you know, we're fine. We're fine. I think, like I said, let's get to a uh, like a good 30 games in. There's no way this team goes on like uh, like a, with a record of 10 and 20 where the season's already over. At worst, we'll be around 500. We can always, with 50 games remaining, we can always get back on track. So we'll just go through, we'll go through the entire month of November all the way down here, and we'll take a look at the record after that. But there are some things that we can talk about, right? Now, when it comes to upgrading the team, we're in year number five. This is the accelerated rebuild option, but that's that's long gone now. Our offensive category is 97 overall, okay? We've made the playoffs three years in a row. I want to take that ne next step. I want to be a true Stanley Cup contender. So the question I want to put to you guys, first off, in the crease, in the goal, in the net, uh, at a scouting assignment, is Calvin Picard or Jean-Luc Picard the answer? Can the Colorado Avalanche win a Stanley Cup or turn into a dynasty with Picard between the pipes? Now, we've seen computer teams like the St. Louis Blues, you know, with Evan Fitzpatrick at 85 overall. We've seen them simulate well defensively. So I don't think you need a goaltender who's in the 90 overall category or, or range, I should say, to win a Stanley Cup. Does it help? Sure. But I think if you build up a good team, you can get it done. So I don't want to. I don't want to say that we have to upgrade from Picard. But um, if we have keep on having freaking see games like this, like five to one loss, five to four loss, it's something that we can think about. If we get to the trade deadline and there's a 90 plus overall goaltender available, you know, Picard and a first to move up and pick up like a, a Carey Price or something, just to go on that three year run. Because remember when we did the contracts. You know, all the players that we have, McKinnon, Drewin, Nolan Patrick, Cam Fowler, uh, Tyson Berry, all the veterans, everybody who has a contract who's not a minor league deal, they it's it's either coming up in the next two or three years. I was signing everyone to that three-year deal, right? So the window to win that Stanley Cup is in the next few years. And after the first month, I'm not convinced. A 9 and 12. Okay, boys. So let's take a look at uh, the individual stats. 
who's doing what for us, who's not doing what. We can make some line changes and all that good stuff. All right, so Maxime Comtois, 16 points, not bad. Actually, that's pretty bad. We had like 21 games played. The most point uh, totals on our team is 16. That's not good enough. So the Colorado Avalanche all the way down here with a record of 9-12. and 12. Uh, Goals for per game, 2.62. So we're not scoring a lot of goals. Goals against per game, 3. We are letting in a lot. Power play percentage, uh, one of the best power plays, which is good. And penalty kill percentage. Uh, penalty kill 78, but time shorthanded, we're a very disciplined team. So that, don't worry about that stat. As long as we're, uh, very disciplined, the penalty kill can be a little bit low. Last 10, though, we are, uh, 3, 7, and 0. Oh. So, let's take a look at the individual stats, player stats, and see who's not simulating well. It might be Clayton Keller on that second line, right? So, Maxine, well, oh, Clayton Keller, never mind. Clayton Keller's got 9 goals in 21 games played. So you guys were right about Clayton Keller on that second line, but he's a minus seven. See, that's that's an issue. Uh, okay, so let's just see here. Maxime Comtois, 19 points, or 16 points in 21 games played, I should say. Clayton Keller, 15. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, 15. That's fine. Jonathan Druin, 14. Nolan Patrick, he's got 10 goals. All right, so that, hmm, I don't know what to make of that. Adam Henrique is a plus two. JT Comfer, Tyson Just, minus five, Travis Konechny, okay, okay, minus seven, Clayton Keller, it seems like the whole team is playing bad, what about defensemen, is there any, cra okay, okay, here we go, Tyson Berry and Cam Fowler, Tyson Berry and Cam Fowler are not playing well together, that might be the one that we can shake up, the first line is getting lit up on this team, okay, now I know, now I know. Now I can always try Ryan Merkley, move him up a little bit. Our locker room chemistry has gone down. Yeah, we're going to have to make a line change here. We have to do something. 9-12-0 is not good enough. Another run like that, 18-24. No, thank you. Um, let's see. Let's see. Defensively, Cam Fowler, Tyson Berry, Ryan Merkley, Travis Sanheim. I mean, I don't have to put a lefty with a righty. Travis Sanheim... Uh, you know what? You know what? Let's split up the two-way defenseman here. All right, let's go Tyson Berry up there, or down there, sorry, with uh, Travis Sanheim and Ryan Merkley. I'm thinking, do I move Derek Puglia up, like do something like that? And then, because Barry is getting, Barry's getting power play time, and he's getting penalty kill time. And I could spread him out. Penalty kill, Tyson Berry, get a few more goals with Derek Puglia. Hmm... Hmm, want to make the right line changes here. Tyson Berry, Derek Pouliot. All right, let me try this out a little bit. Ryan Merkley up there alongside of Cam Fowler. Uh, uh, Travis Sanheim alongside of Derek Pouliot to get some more goals. And then Tyson Berry alongside of Marco Scandella. Hopefully Berry is still fine with his, with his ice time, all right? And offense, you know what? If Clayton Keller's playing that well... I'm going to give him the chance to play on the first line alongside of Patrick and uh, Maxime Comtois. And Travis Konechny is going to go on the second line alongside of Nathan McKinnon and Jonathan Drewin. Let's see if Clay Clayton Keller can get it going with uh, Patrick and uh, Comtois. All right, so those are the line changes I'm making. And you know what? We haven't had any... Oh, shit, I just jinxed it, didn't I? I'm going to say we did. We haven't had any, uh, any injuries just yet. Ooh, and look at that record for the St. Louis Blues. Were they 3-12-5? and 3-12-5. and five. Good. Don't let them make the freaking playoffs. So we will go another month. Yeah, you know what? If we keep on having games like this, we may have to stop it up short. May have to make a trade of some sort. Uh, so we'll go past the Dallas Stars right there. What did we just finish talking about? Uh, Calvin Picard, the answer in the net. So you guys go nuts with the comments about Calvin Picard. I could, oh, you know what I should have done? I should have take took a look at his stats as well. We're not scoring goals, though. That's the thing. Last year, 3.5. This year is like 2. It's way down there. Maybe Ranton it was the wrong trade, boys. Let's see. Are we on a losing streak? There you go. Win against the Pittsburgh Penguins. There you go. Two in a row. Come on. We can beat the St. Louis Blues. Lost them last time. Shootout loss. All right. Fine. Um, also, you know, we're, we're, we just saw the line changes that I made. Do we have too many top four defensemen to succeed? Cam Fowler's a legitimate top two. I think Ryan Merkley, he's on his way to getting there. You know, but we have a three-year time frame. Is he going to become that legitimate top two defenseman within those three years? If not, then maybe we should just rely on him as a top four 
maybe Sanheim in there, and then you got Barry and Pouliot. Maybe you got to trade both of those guys for a legitimate veteran top two defenseman, right? Do we have too many top four defensemen to succeed? Should we trade two, get a top two, and then just go out there and get another Smarco Scandella type, right? Do we just have too many that it's messing with the simulation? Uh, we'll go one, one, one. Yeah, QMJHL, six weeks. There it is. Let's see. I mean, we're losing games. We need to go on a winning streak, man. We need to get a winning streak in, and we need to get it soon. There you go. 5-3, 3-0, 5-0. The Arizona Coyotes, they ain't shit. Well, apparently they are shit. 6-2 loss to the Arizona Coyotes. I'm not liking this, man. We got to start winning. We got to start winning uh, uh, games in bunches and against our division as well. Game against Chicago, we won good. Game against Nashville, we lose in regulation. Game against Dallas, we win. All right. I mean, we've kind of turned it around. Well, not really. We've just maintained it. Ever since that 3-7-0 uh, run, we've been at 500, it seems like. So 17, 18, and 1. So, yep, I'm going to back out again. I'm going to do this right, boys. Going to do this right. We got to get that locker room chemistry up there. Uh, let me go to manage rosters just so I can do this the, the quick way. Let me just quickly take a look at morale. No one's like really pissed off, right? No one's gotten pissed off. I just haven't been. Ebert, yeah, but those are the debt players. Okay, good. So no one's really that pissed off. Goaltenders, I'll take a look at uh, Jean-Luc Picard's stats right now, boys. Because you know what? It might be him and we might have to go out and make a uh, trade for a goaltender if he's not getting it done. So, player stats. Let's see who's stepping up. We can also take a look at uh, Clayton Keller. See how um, see how he's faring on that first line, all right? So points, hang on a second here, forwards. Uh, Maxime Comtois with a 28, and he's an even player now, which is good. Nathan McKinnon, 28, all right? Nolan Patrick with 27. Clayton Keller with 25. So you know, Clayton Keller is playing the same way as Jonathan Druin, Patrick, McKinnon, or Comtois. And what I really like is... All five of those guys are very even. So our top six, I believe, is starting to click right now. Our bottom, our fourth line, Felino, Gucci, and Poirier, minus 12, minus 12, minus 11. That's going to happen, though. I mean, they're not getting, they're not going to get a lot of points. Tyson Jost, Comfer, and, you know, and Henrik, uh, JT Comfer, and Tyson Jost, they should say. They're all plus players as well. I think if I just rely on this lineup, I think we will pull through. Defensively, let's see. Tyson Berry, minus 12. Cam Fowler, minus a 9. So they've begun to pull it back. Derek Pouliot now. He's got 19 points. i got to rely on him, but they're probably all power play. Scandella. Ooh, I don't know what to make of this. I don't know what to make of this. Merkley. Maybe I should put, ooh, you know what? I could try that. I could try that. Because, you know what? Derek Pouliot has getting all those points, and it seems like Ryan Merkley is still not simulating like the way we want him to. I think he's he's not hurting us. I think he's got good defensive stats, but he's not simulating like a Derek Pouliot offensive defenseman just yet, right? If you look at his stats, I mean, he's just on the brink. If that offensive awareness can get into the 90s and passing into the 90s, he can get there. His defensive category is five star, though. I mean, he's only got yeah, he's only got six points. Yep, he's at plus eleven though. Okay, so you know what I'm gonna try to do here. Cam Fowler, I'm gonna put Derek Pouliot alongside of. We're gonna get Derek Pouliot's point to, uh, uh, total ability. Look at that, passing ninety four, offensive awareness ninety three. The only thing that scares me is his defensive category. But we need goals right now. So alongside of Cam Fowler, Ryan Merkley is gonna go back alongside of Travis Sanheim, and then uh, you know what? No, no, no. Ryan Merkley, you're gonna go alongside of uh, Marco Scandella. I'm gonna run with Tyson Berry and Sanheim because Merkley is still getting. Getting the first line power play time, so he should be fine right there. And uh, if he's not, I gotta rely on the veterans right now to get out of this hole. So that's what we're gonna do right there, boys. We're not gonna touch the forward lines. Hopefully, this team cannot uh, or can stay out of the um, out of the doctor's office. I don't need any injuries, man. I lowered the injury level by one. It was at nine for last year. I lowered it to eight. So we'll see. Uh, okay, let's just go all the way up to the All Star break. Yeah, no more talking. Oh, I talked about uh, having too many uh, top four defensemen. How about also having too many playmakers? McKinnon, Comtois, uh, Clayton Keller, JT Comfer, and Travis Konechny, all playmakers. Maybe we need some two-way forwards in there. Another power forward to split up alongside of, uh, not alongside of uh, Nolan Patrick, but on a different line. On that second line. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Maybe some line changes right here, boys. Derek Pouliot on the first. Tyson Berry. Anything about negative uh, morale? I just want to... I'm just waiting at the top, boys. Hang on. Andre Emlin. 
Gabriel Depenta has gained morale because of ice time. Good. All right, so nothing negative. And the San Antonio Rampage are 15, 15, and 5. So not a good simulating year for both the NHL and the AHL squads. There we go. There we go. I haven't seen a regulation loss in a long time now. This is good. There we go. There we go. We're like two weeks away from our last regulation loss against the Nashville Predators. There we go. Yep, these lines are working. Oh, hang on, hang on. Did I see some morale dropping? We just lost to the Edmonton Oilers. That's what we needed. We desperately needed that. So Derek Pouliot on the first line is starting to do good for us. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight, yeah. So basically, since the game uh, against Chicago, we've gone eight, one, and one. Thank God. The record is... I mean, it's still early enough in the season that if we continue to play like this, we'll be in a fine spot. The locker room chemistry is coming back up. The, oh man, this division is a tough division as well. We still have to pass a lot of teams ahead of us, but uh, I'm glad that we got back on track here. Uh, let me just take a look at the individual stats again. Let's just see if anyone has really taken off. Derek Pouliot's the one. I think... Ryan Merkley's just not making the, the getting the point totals just yet. And this team, you know, we have to score goals. There it is. Look at look at Maxime Comtois. He's getting closer and closer to point per game. Nathan McKinnon's up there. Clayton Keller's up there. Patrick is up there. Drew in. Adam Henrique is getting up there again. Yeah, that that I think that's the change. I think that was the, look at him, like 26 points now in 44 games played, 7 goals. Tyson Berry is also a good point producer, so it's better that he's alongside of Travis Sanheim and Ryan Merkley. Ooh, Ryan Merkley grew to an 87. Maybe he benefits from being on the bottom six, boys. And he's not angry. He's gained morale because of his ice time. All right, so maybe he was playing too much. All right, all right. And you know what? I keep on forgetting. What's his name? Jean-Luc Picard. Let's see. Jean-Luc Picard, 2.47 goals against average. And a save. It's, it's not his fault. The save percentage is fine. 0.918. That's fine. We need to score more goals and we need to play better defensively. It's not Jean-Luc Picard's fault. So we're going to take this sucker all the way up until the trade deadline, boys. I feel like we're halfway through the season. 44 games, just over halfway through the season. I feel like this team is uh, its on the right track now. I got the lines figured out. That's why you go through the regular season to see how your team is playing, get the right line, <laughs> right line combinations. It's early, boys. And you know what? I could go for some more H2O. Hang on a sec. Ah, beautiful. And just as I was getting happy again, there's two losses. Nice, but it's answered back with two W's. And a big win over the Chicago Blackhawks. Come on, not, not, not two losses in a row before the All-Star break. All right, all right, all right. See, this is what I don't want. Now, all of a sudden, in the last six, we're two and four, right? Come on, guys. We had a great uh, we had a great month right there. After the All-Star break, with the break, just, just get on the right track. We have to start winning games. End of story. There you go. 3-2 win over the Devils. 3-0 win over the Anaheim Ducks. 2-1 uh, loss. The Tampa Bay Lightning. At least as an Eastern Conference team. I just want points, man. I, I just I just want to go on that, that winning streak. We already had a good month, but just one more good month and we're in. Uh, United States. Yeah, four words to six weeks. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. How many more games we got? Five... 9, 11, yeah, 11 games remaining. Come on, win like 6 or 7 of them. Calgary Flames, ooh, Bergfors. Oh, you know what? I do have that uh, Bergfors goaltender. Uh, you know what? He hasn't been playing at all. He's a fringe starter. Well, I'm going to have plenty of trade bait assets here at the trade deadline if I want to make the team better. Decline the trade for right now. We'll go through all the uh, trade baits that we have. There you go. Yes. All right. So since the trade or the all-star break, we are 4-1. Beautiful. Game against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Beautiful. All right. All right. I'll take that. So since the all-star break, 5-1-1. One, one. The record is mu looking much better now for the Colorado Avalanche. 30-23-3. Beautiful. Uh... Yeah, let's continue to go. Well, two games, two games. Come on, I like this team right now. I think ever since we made the line change with Derek Pouliot, I, I, I think if we had these lines the entire year, you'd see a team that was closer to the top of the NHL. I think this is a good lineup. Come on, you got to beat the Chicago Blackhawks. Got a oh, 3-1 loss, not good. Uh, can we just get on a winning streak? I know. Oh. <laughs> 3-1 loss to Chicago, 2-1 win over Philadelphia. Vancouver, they're a good team. St. Louis, they're trying to get back on track. They're a good team. Shit. Anaheim Ducks, they're a crappy team. Come on. All right, come on. Come on. Four games, win three of them. Grand Pierre, ooh, they want our enforcer. Nope, I'm not making any trades right now. 
I'll make the trades that I want to make, computers. Big win against the Vancouver Canucks. That's a big win. Get the hell out of here. I'm keeping my Grand Pierre. Uh, St. Louis, divisional opponent. Oh, my God, 7-4 to four loss. Against the team that's trying to get back in the playoffs. Not good. Islanders, they're a good team. I had 4-2 loss. Fucking hell. Oh, my God. Fantastic. Fantastic, man. Ah. Oh. All right, we're in for a wild uh, finish to this season, boys. The playoffs are certainly not a guarantee. I just, we can't get going. We were doing great, and then all of a sudden, what, what, what was it? Two wins? Ah, two, four, and one then in your next seven games after going to that after the All-Star break. God damn it, man. Three in a row right now. Three in a row. We were 32 and 24, and now we're 32 and 27. Three in a row. All right, so we're going to have to end it right here, boys. We cannot go into the end of the season in this video. We're going to have to make some trades, some line changes, some something, because this is way too close. So if you take a look at the Central Division right now, it doesn't seem like anyone's going to catch the Winnipeg Jets. They're way up there. Same thing with the Dallas Stars. They would really have to shoot themselves in the foot. Um, but we're in a good spot. It's just the entire division is in a good spot. You know, with the amount of games left, Nashville could make it into the playoffs. Chicago could make it into the playoffs. The Minnesota Wild could maybe even catch Dallas. So we have to go on a tear. Again, at this time of the year, we have to go on a tear. I'm so sick of this, man. 20 games remaining, we probably have to win like 13 of those games. Oh, all right, so team stats. You guys go nuts now. Anything that you see we need to make or any changes that you see we need to make, let me know. Central division, let's see. Goals four per game. What are we at? Goals four per game, 2.85. Now, that is trending upward. I think we are scoring goals now. I think it's because of the horrible start to the season. Goals against per game, we are third best in our division. I'm not even going to look at the rest of the NHL, boys. It's just about our division right now, so I'm just going to keep an eye on that. Uh, power play percentage, 18.1. That could be better, but times on the power play... Uh, times in the power, but you know what? We have a lot. Actually, that could be a lot better because, yeah, the Winnipeg Jets, they're right there, and they have a much better power play. Maybe we're just getting goals five on five, but our power play looks like could, it, it, it looks like it could improve. And the penalty kill, let's see this, the Colorado Avalanche, 81.3. I'm fine with that. Uh, it's just the last 10 again. 5-4-1, man. Okay, so and our home record, did you see that? 14-17-1. Damn, we're playing horrible here in Colorado. So let's see what the lines look like or what the individual stats look like, and maybe we can make some line changes. So our captain, Nathan McKinnon, he's having a fine year. 51 points in 62 games played. Looks like he's going to be a 30-goal scorer again. There's not, He's an even I mean, above-even player, a plus player. That's a fine season. Maxime Comtois, 50 points in 62 games played. Fine there. Jonathan Drouin, he, what did he have last year? 25 goals. He's probably going to be a 20-goal scorer. Um, but he's helping out Nathan McKinnon, so I'm fine. Uh, Clayton Keller, 26 goals, 43 points. Nolan Patrick. All right, so Nolan Patrick could be having a much better season, boys. Maybe him on that first line. Maybe he should be playing alongside of Nathan McKinnon. I don't know. But that first line, I mean, he's... What it, well, previous season, was he point per game? Pretty sure he was point per game. Yeah, look what he did last year. 32 goals in 70 games played. Year before that, 46 points in 49 games played. Year before that, 70 points. So this year, he's not exactly pulling the same. Yeah, I mean, he was his shooting percentage last year was 16%. This year, it's only 11.4. So maybe that line is not good enough. Or maybe Clayton Keller's taking all the goals from him. I don't know. Adam Henrique, 35 points, plus 5 in 62 games played. JT Comfer, and has he gotten angry at all about ice time? Uh, No. So we're fine with JT Comfer and Tyson Jost on the third line, and they're uh, they're making it work with Adam Henrique. Travis Konechny. All right, so Travis Konechny is not having a great year, boys. And we got him on the second line now with uh, Nathan McKinnon, correct? So maybe trade bait right there. We talked about having too many playmakers. Maybe a, a trade, Travis Konechny, and something for a two-way forward. Uh, defenseman, let's see here. Tyson Berry, Derek Puglia, both with 31 points. Yeah, so these guys are our point producers. Cam Fowler with uh, 22 points. Ryan Merkley, he's back down to an 86. What uh, is ice time? Ooh, he's lost morale because of ice time. Look at that, Ryan Merkley. 
See, see, this is the issue. Too many top four defensemen. I don't want him to get angry now. He's a plus 18. He's making it work with Marco Scandella. Travis Sanheim, how many points does he have? 12 points. All right, so, boys, what do we do here? Goaltenders, uh, Jean-Luc Picard, .916. Now, I'm not going uh, to blame our goaltender. I think our backup could be doing better. Um, I think it's our team. I think it's our team. So, boys, what do we do? What trades could we make? What what type of players could we bring in to help us go on that 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 Stanley Cup run? Because I'm not looking to just get to the second round. I'm not looking to just get by the first round. I'm looking to win that Stanley Cup this year, okay? So, a veteran. Now, I'll show you just the assets that we have that we can move on from. Draft picks. I, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be opposed to trading away our first, second, or third, or a combination of all three this year if the perfect player is out there, okay? Goaltenders. Let's just see this now. We got Picard. We got Rodrigue. We got Depenta, who are both growing, both playing. Is uh, Rodrigue still a backup? He's still an other goalie, so he's fine down there, and Depenta's growing. So they're both growing, but there's some trade value right there. Bergfors, we can trade him. He's got some uh, trade value. Uh, defenseman, I don't think we have any. No, 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 no trade value there. Right wingers, no trade value there. And Vutalainen, maybe some prospects. No, the, uh, the value comes with the goaltenders and the pick, boys. But that's a lot. If we wanted the first and uh, a roster player or first and one of those goaltenders, you could get a lot. All right? But uh, who's out there? That's the thing. So, skaters matching the block. You got Ryan Kessler, who is an 86. Might not be a bad idea for, like, a fourth liner for one year. Just a defensive player. How many, how many years left? Two years left. Now, that wouldn't work. That would not work. Uh, Goligowski, Goligowski, let's see, Car ooh, John Carlson, a Arizona Coyotes want to trade away John Carlson, 89 overall, 31 years of age, one year left, that question about having too many top four defensemen, how about trading away a top four defenseman or two top four defensemen for uh, John Carlson here, right? The only thing is he's 31 years of age and you got to give him a contract this year, but that's a, that's a big one, that's a big one, that wasn't, you know, I'm going to go through all the teams here. There might be some good ones. David Backus, 83. No. Let's see the Buffalo Sabres. Anyone? No. I'm just looking for overall veterans right now. We might as well do our due diligence here, boys. I'm going to give... Uh, I think we're going to give it to Jean-Luc Picard. If you guys see any goaltenders uh, down there, like Corpusalo, I know he's available, but... Um, I wouldn't say... like I, 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 I want to go with Depenta and what's his name? And uh, Rodrigue. Yeah, he's 85 overall. No. If there's like a Carey Price or a Holtby. Oh, I'll take a look at it. But other than that, no. Joe Pavelski. Here we go. 82 overall. Uh, two years left. No, thank you. Uh, the Ch uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Do they have Corey Crawford? Corey Crawford is a goaltender. Let's see. Let's see what Corey Crawford is. 86 overall. Uh, four years left. No, there's no way I'm taking on that contract. You kidding me, Colorado? Get the hell out of here. Uh, the, what's it called? The Dallas Stars, I thought I saw, oh, it was Little John. I thought I saw a Timothy Liljegren down there on the bottom right. I was like, hell yeah, I'll take that. Patrick Hornfist, Anthony Mantha, Luke Glenn Denning. Uh, one year left for these guys, Patrick Hornfist. Um, remember that idea of having too many playmakers? Maybe a sniper instead of Konechny on that second line. A veteran to play alongside of Nathan McKinnon and uh, and uh, Jonathan Druin for one year. Might not be a bad idea, right? Konechny was not simulating well. And uh, how many playmakers do we need? Florida, nothing. Edmonton, there was nothing. The LA Kings, uh, nothing. Just a bunch of 70s. Here we go. Some big boy contracts. No way. You guys got yourselves into a lot of trouble with that Parise deal. I'm not taking it off your hands. The Montreal Canadiens, let's see here. Nope, nothing there. Uh, the New Jersey Devils, let's see here. Nothing there. Uh, the Nashville Predators, take some players away from teams we're competing with. Nothing there. Uh, the New York Islanders, Andrew Ladd, 84. He's probably got like two or three years left, right? Three years left. No way I'm taking that. Uh, the New York Rangers, Mark Stahl. Here we go. An upgrade from uh, Marco Scandella just for one year. Hayes, uh, 4.6. He'd probably get a big increase, though, but for two years. Maybe he retains salary. Mark Stahl, though, for one year to replace Marco Scandella. I mean, that, that's a big increase in the defensive category, and you can help out your penalty kill, right? And Marco Scandella, we only have him on a one-year deal anyway. So straight up, Marco Scandella in a second for Mark Stahl. I wouldn't mind doing that. That might not be a bad idea. Dion Fagouf, 
Uh, Cardeals, look at this guy. One year left, 86 overall. Let's see, two-way forward. So remember the idea of uh, Konechny not working out. Hmm, maybe, maybe just trade away Konechny for Cardeals. And a second or something, you know, just to get that veteran two-way forward in there for this one year. Th this is the kind of place I'm at right now, boys. I'm, I don't want to let seasons just go by. we got a three-year window. We've seen how the team simulates. I think we got the top six working out. The defenseman, we know. Um, we could upgrade Scandella, and I think the upgrade for Konechny. I think Scandella and Konechny would be two big upgrades for this team. Uh, Tampa Bay, let's see the Tampa Bay Lightning. Nothing. The, ta uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let's see, Kush, nope, that's nothing there. Vancouver Canucks, anything, nothing there. Uh, the Winnipeg Jets, President's Trophy Jets, no, they won't win anything. And last but not least, the Washington Capitals. Yeah, okay. So, boys, there were a few different... Um, few different pieces out there. There was uh, Patrick Hornfist to upgrade from Travis Konechny. There was that Kerdeels guy that we could upgrade from Konechny. Because uh, I like Comtois, Nolan Patrick, Clayton Keller. Uh, Konechny, though, on that second line. I think that could be upgraded. JT Comfer, Henrik, and Tyson Jost are a fine third line. And then the fourth line, eh, it's a fine... No, you know what? The fourth line doesn't need to be touched. And then defensively, you could get John Carlson... But if you get John Carlson, who are you trading away? It's like you got to trade away. You got to trade away like a Derek Pouliot. You got to trade away Tyson Berry, a Travis Sanheim. That might be a little bit too much. I think the upgrade from Scandella into Mark uh, Mark Stahl just for one year, because Marco Scandella, he's just I just signed him for one year. We have defensemen coming up in the in the in the in the minors, right? So how about Scandella and a second for Mark Stahl, and then Konechny. And something for Patrick Hornfist, you know, and that would, re and then you could even go Clayton Keller on the second, and then put that sniper alongside of Maxine Comtois, Nolan Patrick, and Hornfist, that 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 veteran up there on that first line to get those three going. Hmm, a lot of different things we can do here, boys. So I'm gonna leave it with you guys. What should the Colorado Avalanche do here in year five at the trade deadline? The playoffs are not a certainty, but we've been here in three years in a row now. We know this with the Central Division. As long as we have a chance of getting into the playoffs, we'll be fine. So what do we do? Let me know, boys, and I will see you in the next one We go when we go on our final push for the Year 5 playoffs. Be sure to check out our website, 2bcsports.com, where the hockey talk continues. Find myself and others in the live interactive chat, or dive into the active forums to talk about sports and gaming. You can also find us on Twitch, where the live streams come to life. Yeah!